السلام عليكم <coughs> الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد so here we are continuing on for Maria um, let me see if I can share my screen my screen and open this before I go on shortcut and this here Okay, we are live. And back to the questions. Oh yeah, I need to share my screen. So share desktop. Desktop screen. Send to everyone. So we should be able to see my screen or my desktop on, on the screen. I'll just confirm that's the case. Yes, it is. All right. So uh, question. Position A, 30 degrees north, and two positions are plotted on a Lambert chart with a constant or cone of 0.5. A and B are connected by a straight line. The true track measured at A is 88.5. What's the true track measured at B? So if you're in the northern hemisphere, going from 17 east, to 23 east, so we're going eastbound, away from Greenwich. Um, and the constant of cone is 0.5. Okay, the true track measured at A is 88.5. So if we do our calculation of, let me see if I've already done this before. I don't think so. All right, so what I'll do is I'll do a new slide. And if we were to say, true track measure, okay, so I'm going to do the um, convergency calculation. Convergency equals Chalong times sine mean latitude. So convergency equals, we have a change in longitude of 2330 to 1730. 23, let's just say 23 minus 17 equals 6. Change along to the 6 times. What's the mean latitude? 30 north, so the sine 30. I'll do that on the screen actually. So sine 30. 30 times, sorry, 0.5. So 0.5 times 6 is 3. So convergency, convergency equals 3. All right, so if we're going outbound, so it's a circle. Well, yeah, let's do a circle. And if we were in the um, which hemisphere? Northern hemisphere. So we draw a line through the northern hemisphere. And we're going to draw the meridians. So we're going this, this direction, aren't we? And we know that the distance between the two meridians is, is uh, well, we've got six times 0.5, so it's three. True track measured at A, the rum line would be, so the, this rum line would be zero nine zero. 
because it's staying at the same latitude. However, the the track, let's just say that's the track, that's going to be at A, it's great is less than 90, that angle there. So less than 90 by how much? By less than 90 by half. So we do the convergency angle, the conversion angle, sorry, conversion angle equals three divided by two, which equals 1.5. So if the true track measured at A is 88.5, so we're going to say 88.5 plus 3 equals 91.5. Yeah, 91.5. Okay, ready? Go. Yes, got it correct. Alhamdulillah. Let's check if anybody's online. Yeah, good. No questions in the chat. On a Mercator's projection, the distance between 57 north, so the same latitude, going from 35 east to 40 east, the distance is 5 centimetres. That's a scale question now. The scale of 57 north is approximately. So we're going to say, so we've got a change of longitude of 5 degrees, so we're departure. We need to do cos 57, cosine 57. So cosine 57, 57 times cosine, 0.54. So 0.54, and we have a change of longitude of five degrees times 60 is 300. So we'll do 0.54 times 300, that's 163. So 163 nautical miles one hundred and sixty-three nautical miles and we'll multiply that by one eight five two zero zero to get centimeters. So one six three times one eight five two zero zero was thirty million divided by uh, five centimeters equals six million six million centimeters. The scale at fifty seven north <clears throat> is approximately. Correct. A straight line from A to B, the same latitude in the Southern Hemisphere, 53 South to 53 South, from 155 East to 170 West. Oh, great, all right, so we've got this one of these. So if I draw a circle. So here, um, straight line, from 53 south, let's say 53 south is down here. And from 155 east to 170 west. So we're gonna draw a, an anti-meridian line So we'll say that's 180. Okay. Here we have 155 east, which would be here. Somewhere around there. Going to 170 west, which would be around here. So 
So we're going easterly, pretty much, but we're going over the uh, Anton Meridian, across the international date line, if you want to call it that, to the west side. Um, okay, so a straight line, da -da -da, went past in one second. Oh, they're asking about standard parallels. When passing 175 West, the true track is... Let's just try this. I'm not sure if we need to worry about standard parallels. So when passing 175 West, which is around here. So when passing this point, The true track. Okay, so let's just use the convergency. Um, conversion equals change of longitude times sine in latitude. So change of longitude is. Well, actually, it's just let's just make it simple. Oh, a foot, oh, hold on. Change of longitude is 170, that's 10, and 180 minus 55, oh, 55, 180 minus 155. So 25 on this side, 10 on the other side. So 35 degrees is change of longitude. So 35 times, and what's the latitude? 53 south. So sine 53, is 0.7986, which is 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 28 degrees approximately. So we would be starting at, let's say, less than 90. Let's divide that by two. 28 divided by two equals 14. So 90 minus 14 on one side. And we've got nine, 90 plus 14 on the other. So we'd be starting at 76. At A, we would have an angle of 76. At B, we would have an angle of 104. At the position that we're looking at, it would be somewhere between 90 and 104, maybe. The true track, oh yeah, but it's gonna be more than 90, isn't it? So it's gonna be, yep. So somewhere between 90 and 104, but 102. Is the only one here. That's wrong. The answer was 78. Okay. Yeah, decreasing, increasing. 175 is here. So it was greater than 90. Yeah, correct. What were they asking for? The great circle track or the... Um, Oh, I may have messed up. Was it the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere? Southern Hemisphere, my bad. I did on the wrong side. Um, um, I should have subtracted that. So 90 minus 14, sorry. It's gonna be about 70 something. What did we get as the answer? 78, yeah, okay. I got that. I, I, did the calculations correct, but I applied them the wrong way. Next, a straight line from 53 north. Is that the same values? Yes, it is. On a Lambert conformal conical chart with standard parallels of 50 and 56 north. When passing really 175, the true track is. When passing 175, the true track. What did we do before then? 175, the true track. What's the difference? 53, 155. 
Fifty-three, one seventy. Fifty-three, one seventy. Standard parallels, fifteen fifty-six. Ah, standard parallels were north before. Now they're south. Or oh, sorry, they were south before. Now they're north. Okay, so same question. This time we're in the northern hemisphere. So if we're in the northern hemisphere. Excuse me. In Northern Hemisphere. So that would the run line would be ninety degrees. Point A angle would be ninety minus fourteen. We're more towards point B, so it would be increasing in angle. So it can be more than ninety degrees. So between 90 and 104, there's two possible answers. Great. Two possible answers. I think 102.5, Straight line from A from west to east, okay, because we're going the other direction. I should have just read the question properly. Yeah, we went in the opposite direction. Sorry, people. Uh, let's go back. So what I should have done is drawn an angle like this, that direction. Yeah, let me take that out. That should have been here. So if that's 270, D I D I D. So decrease and increase in. So it should be decreasing in angle 260. Um, it's going to be closer to the 170 side. So 260. If we see 270 plus 14 is 284. Okay. Now getting closer to the to the midpoint. It would be somewhere between 284 and 270. The possible answers are there's only one, that's 260. Actually, that was the closest one to 270. Yeah. Okay, I'll leave that there. From Rakovnik to Frankfurt, the true track of departure along the straight line is 272. Let's see, what's the constant of the cone? From Rakovnik, 50. Let's draw it on here. Okay, so from Rakovnik, 50 north, 50, 50 north again, so same parallel, same latitude. We're going from east, from 13 east to 8 east, so we're going westbound. Which latitude? North, northern hemisphere. So that we're going westbound. Okay, so that's 50, 50, 50. This is the latitude. Ah, oh, I pressed the button accidentally. Sorry. Let's just without looking at the answer. Let's just continue. So 50. I go here. So at this latitude here, 
we're going westbound. And we're going from 13 from this longitude. To which longitude to this longitude. Okay, for a straight line. Going from there to there. Okay. The true track of departure along the straight line is 272. True track of departure along the straight line is 272. Well, the run line is 270 because it's the same latitude. The true track along the straight line is 272. Okay. Constant. All right. 272. Don't know what we're being asked. The constant of the cone. Point seven nine. Constant of the cone. Uh, maybe you're trying to figure yeah, figure out the sine value, sine mean latitude. Is that? No, oh, I don't know. Let's read the answer. On a Lambert chart, convergency equals that. Yes. The run line track between the two points, constant track of 270, yeah, which we've got. A stated track angle of 272 indicates that it's a great circle track, yes, you know that. Because 272 would look something like, like this line here, where the black line is. Uh, no, that's 272 some point. The difference between the great circle track and the ram line track equals the conversion angle, yeah. So if they want us to calculate that, it's 272 minus 270 equals two degrees. Yeah, conversion angle equals half the convergency. So convergency is four. Yeah. And then convergency factor. So convergence equals change of longitude times convergency factor. Yeah, convergency factor equals convergency divided by change of longitude. Convergence factor equals four degrees divided by 5.05. Convergency factor was calculated up above. And that is known as the constant of the cone. Okay. So let's do that. Convergency factor equals, is also known as constant of the cone. And that is Change of longitude, simply. Change of longitude, all right, let's see that again. Change of longitude. So we've got 13, 41.5, minus zero, zero, 8, let's just say 8, 38.3. Equals. What shall I do on my calculator over here? Thirteen forty one point five minus eight thirty eight point three five degrees three twelve. So we've got five degrees three twelve. Something 
like that. Okay. Just the same as saying 5.05. 5.05. So that's the change in longitude. Okay, so the change in longitude times sine mean latitude. Sine mean latitude, latitude is 50. Okay, 50 times 50. So times sine fifty five point nine. So we've got an answer of three point nine, three point eight seven, which is four. Five point zero five times sine mean latitude. 5.05 times, so if we take sine 50, well, let's do this, 50, 5.9, it's 50.098, so if I say 50.1, 5.05 times, Sine fifty point one. Answer times five point. What's sine answer? That's five point zero five times zero point seven seven times five point zero five. That gives three point eight seven. So the conversion angle is that divided by two. We'll just say four divided by two equals two. And then we we're asked about something called convergency factor, change along this U times convergency factor. So four divided by 5.5, 4 divided by 5.05 equals, so it's the sine value we're looking for, gosh, is that all? Which is 0 0.79, 0 0.77 we got. Okay, my bad. So when I say constant of current, they're basically looking for the sine value. Next, an aeronautical chart is conformal when the meridians and parallels are perpendicular to each other. Formal by construction at any point uh, the meridians and parallels are perpendicular to each other the map is an equidistant normal projection no at any point the scale over a short distance in the direction of the parallel is equal to the scale and direction of the meridian and the meridians are perpendicular to the power. I don't understand what that means. Every great circle is represented by a straight line in the map. I think it's B. No, C. At any point, the scale over a short distance in the direction of the parallel. Direction of the parallel. In order for a chart to be conformal, it must have 
Equal scale in all directions, yes. Correct shapes, a right angle graphic. So the short distance in the direction of the parallel is equal to the scale in the direction of the meridian. It's kind of word. Who came up with this stupid question? Wording is nonsense. On a Mercator, Mercator chart at latitude 60 north, the distance measured between west 02 and east 08 is 20 centimeters. The scale of the chart at latitude 60 is approximately okay. So on a Mercator chart at latitude 60 north. So 60 north is the latitude and distance. So we need a cosine of 60 north. So because departure equals Chalong 60 times cosine latitude departure equals. So change of longitude is two plus eight, which is 10 degrees. So 10 times 60, which is 600. So we'll say 600 times cosine 60, 0.5. Cosine of 60, which equals 0.5. So departure is 300. Miles. Latitude 60 north, distance between that is 20 centimeters. So 300. So convert 300 uh, to centimeters. So 300 times 185200 equals 55 million, 55 and a half million. Equals fifty five five six zero 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 centimeters, and we'll divide that by twenty centimeters. Divide by twenty equals two mil two million sorry yeah two million seven hundred seventy eight thousand two million seven hundred seventy eight thousand okay. Possible answers are well, the closest one is one, two million seven hundred eighty thousand. That's correct. At latitude sixty north, the scale of a Mercator projection is five hundred five million. The length of the chart between C and D is we've got so C is are they at the same latitude? Yeah, sixty north, sixty north. From east 08 to west 08. So it's a west bound. Is it east 8 to west 8? Yeah, so again, west bound. So 8 plus 8 is 16. Um, so we want the chart length. I'm going to calculate that. So let's see. Actually, let's do that again. So that's chart. Uh, the change in longitude is 16. Maybe 16. Times sixty, which is nine sixty, and the latitude is sixty north. So if we do cos sixty, cosine sixty is point five. That's nine sixty times point five is four eighty. So four hundred and eighty nautical miles. The scale is five million. That's five million. 
So how do we get from 480 to 5 million? We say 480 divided by 0.5200. We get, let's say that again, 480 times 185200. We get 88 million, so nearly 89 million. So that's going to be 480 times that equals 88896. Good. And that is. And we have a scale. The scale is one to five million. So we would normally say 89 divided by something gives us five. So if we just say 88.8, whatever, divided by five million, that gives us seven, let's say 18 centimeters. Or oh, 17.8 centimeters. That's correct. Good. A direct Mercator graticule is based on the projection that is. Say a direct Mercator graticule is based on a projection that is cylindrical. Okay, let's do our incorrect answers. Eight incorrect answers. On a chart, the distance along the ridge in between latitudes 45 and 46 north is six centimeters. So we're just going north to south or, or south to north. The scale of the chart is approximately, so that's going to be uh, 60. Because one, one degree of latitude is 60 nautical miles times So 16 nautical miles times 185200. It's 11,112,000 divided by six centimeters. 1,852. That's this one. Which statement is correct about the scale of a Lambert projection? The scale reaches its minimum value at the parallel of origin. It contracts inwards at this point. So this red line in the middle is the parallel of origin. And it says that the scale contracts. Next, a straight line from 53 south to 53 south, from east to west, so going over the anti-meridian of Greenwich. That's, so it's an eastbound track, 090 in other words. Well, the gram line would be 090. Straight line, if it's a great circle track, is drawn on a Lambert con conical chart with standard parallels, 50 south and 56 south. When passing 175 west, the true track is, okay, let's draw that here. So if we take a southern hemisphere, Um, going east to west, yeah. So we're doing a line like this. Here is the Greenwich anti meridian. We've got longitude 155 east and 170 west. So here's 155 east. Is 170 west. All right. 
and they're asking us about true track when passing 175 west so when passing this point here when passing that point what's the true track actually they're asking us what What's the true track when passing this point here? Southern Hemisphere looks like that. So we're going, let's just move this up a bit to make it look more realistic. Okay, so if the true track would, would start at 90 degrees, sorry, the run line would be 90 degrees, so the midpoint, so this, let's say a point around here would be 90 degrees in line with the run line decrease. And it's going to increase, decrease. It's going to decrease in value. It's going to be less than 90 degrees over here. The only one that's less than 90 degrees is 78. Correct. The straight line from A to B, 53 north, same, same parallel, sorry, same latitude, 53 north, going from 155 west to 170 east, so going the other direction now. Going like that. Where are we north now? We're north in the Northern Hemisphere. So 53 North going this direction from 155 West to 170 East. So going from 155 West to 170 East. Um, when passing 175, when passing this point here, the meridian, uh, so the true track would be, so the great circle track, the run line would be 270. The true, the great circle track would be less than 270 because it's decreasing, you can see. So um, less than 270, we have two that are less than 270. Is it going to be closer to 270 or further away? 175, I'll say closer to 270. Let's say, well, it could be 260, it could be 257. Um, let me just guess, go for 260, yeah. without doing all that calculation, just sort of use common sense. Two fifty six. Mm -hmm. All right, that's fine. Next. From Rakovnik, so again from fifth same same um, latitude. Going from 13 east to 38, yeah, sorry, to 08 east, so going westbound. Okay. So we're in the northern hemisphere, going from 13 east to 8 east. So let's just say that's 13 east. So we're going to 8 east. And uh, the true track of the departure along the straight line is 272. The run line would be 270. If the True track is 272, then we're in the great circle. 272. 
departure along the straight line 272. So is that all the same as the, this point here? This angle here, hold on. This angle. That's uh, 270 plus two degrees. So that's gonna be two degrees. Yeah, two degrees, that means we will also have two degrees in that, right? Good. The true track of departure along the straight line is 272. The constant of the cone of this Lambert conformal projection. If that's 272, then that would be um, 270 minus 2, 268. The constant of the cone, all right, so this is calculated. Constant of the cone is basically your sign value. So we're saying here, change of longitude times sign mean latitude equals convergency. We know that the conversion angle is two degrees. Conversion angle equals two. Convergency equals two times two. Two times two, which equals four. So we have four equals change of longitude times sine mean latitude. So four equals, what's the change in longitude? Ah, oh, I pressed the button accidentally. That minus that. That's a change in longitude. So we're going to say 13, 41.5 minus 8, 38.3, 8, 38.3. Five, three, twelve, like that, which is the same as saying five point zero five, which equals five point zero five. So that's the change in longitude. So four equals five point zero five times sine mean latitude. Do we know the latitude? Yes, the latitude is 50. It's this value here. Let's just say sine, what is 50, 0, 5.9, that's 50.09, or let's say 50.1, let's say sine answer, 0.76 or 0.77, 4 equals 5.05 times 0. Point seven six seven. Yeah, which equals three point eight seven. In other words, four. So point 
767. Ooh, that's close. I would have picked the wrong answer there. I would have chosen 0.77. Anyhow, that's done now. There's an image for this. That's nonsense. Come back to that. An aeronautical chart is conformal when this answer, a bunch of things. A straight line from A to B is drawn on a polar stereographic chart when passing the meridian 155. The true track is so a straight line from A to B, same latitude, 75 south. So a straight line from A to B, latitude 75 south, on a polar stereographic chart, okay, great. So let's do that. Take this out, take that out, take this out. All that. There we go. So the polar stereographic chart is going to be more of a circle. There we go. And if we're in the southern hemisphere, then we're going to be looking up from the bottom of the earth. So that's Greenwich. Okay, question now is a straight line from 75 south, same latitude, going from 120 east to 160 east. So if this is 120 east, going to 160 east. Straight line looks like this. There we go. So in the southern hemisphere, it would actually look something like. In other words, what we're going to have is in, in this, that, hold on. When passing the meridian 155, so again, 120 east to 160 east, which, yeah. When passing the meridian 155, the true track is, so this is a convergency thing, isn't it? So, convergency equals uh, change in longitude is 40 degrees times sine mean latitude, so sine 75. So I'm gonna say 40, I'm oh, sorry, sine 75, okay, 0 0.965, 0 0.966. So 40 times 966. which is 38.6, or 39. So that's the convergency at meridian 155, which is about here. When passing that meridian, the true track is 
it's going to be less than two. Um, so if the true track, oh, true track is different. Okay. So the way to do this is like so. these together. There we go. So if that's zero 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 that means this is zero zero zero. This line here zero zero zero. So I'll just do that. Zero zero zero. And the angle is talking about this angle here. That's less than 90 degrees. The only one that's less than 90 is A, it's 75 degrees. That's the correct answer. I'm doing that. What are the initial true course and distance between? Refer to image or charts, and I'm not going to do that one now. So I'll do that again. Questions I've got wrong before. I'll take uh, this one here, constant of the cone. Well, we know that's 0.79. Yeah, fine. Charts. Do the first forty questions now. Uh, polar stereographic. Straight line between seventy-five south, one sixty-six east, seventy-eight south, one fifty-four east. It's drawn a sharp true track angle. That's the answer. Um, Try to choose right. Seventeen ninety. Your I think the answer is one hundred three on this one. Yep. A to B. And pass and reading fifty. True track of straight line 75 north, 10 west is 80 degrees. So route A to B is drawn post stereographic charts, yes. Grid line with Greenwich. True track straight line at A, 75 north is 10 degrees west. No, sorry, at 10 degrees west, longitude. It's 80 degrees, so it's going east. What's the grid track when passing the meridian 50 east? All right. So let's do this. So A to B, or the stereographic. It's Northern Hemisphere. And uh, true track, 10 degrees west. Actually, northern hemisphere is like this. Sorry. There we go. 10 degrees west is here. And straight line at A is 80 degrees. West. So true track at A. Let's 
say it's like this. That's 80 degrees, less than 90 anyway. Okay, what's the grid track? The grid track when passing 50 degrees east. So if we grid this all. So if that's 10 degrees west, 50 degrees east is over here. This line. The grid track when passing 50 east. There's a grid track. That's more than 90. Is it 110? I'm pretty sure last time we did this, the answer was 90. What have I done wrong here? What's the grid track when passing meridian 50? The true track of the straight line at A is 75 north, 10 west. True track. The true track of the straight line at A. So route A to B is drawn on a polar stereographic chart with the grid aligned at meridian. Okay. The true track of the straight line at A, 75 north, 10 degrees west, is 80 degrees. Yes, yeah, so that's less than 90, that's good. Um, what is the grid track when passing the meridian 50 east? Is it possible? It could be like that. Could it be possibly 90? Yes, yeah, 10 degrees. Maybe I've done that too far out. This perhaps, that's more like 10 degrees. Okay. That's 80 degrees. Let's just say 90. Yep. At 47 north, the chart distance between meridians 10 degrees apart. Forty-seven degrees north. The chart distance between meridians ten degrees apart is twelve point seven. Another scale question here. Okay. So forty-seven north. Chart distance. Meridians ten degrees apart. Meridians ten degrees times sixty is six hundred. Forty-seven north. So co cosine forty-seven. Point six eight times six hundred four hundred and nine nautical miles times one eight five two zero zero seventy five seventy six million divided by twelve point seven centimeters. That's nearly six million centimeters. Good. A straight line drawn on the chart measures 4.63 centimeters. So 150 times 185200, 27,788,000 divided by 4.63, six million. Chart scale.
one million eight hundred fifty thousand. There times four centimeters divided by one eight five two zero zero. So thirty nine point nine five nine six. In other words, forty nautical miles. A straight line on a chart, four point eight nine centimeters long, represents one hundred and eighty five nautical miles. So straight line, one eight five nautical miles times one eight five two zero zero divided by one. No, oh, sorry, four point eight nine. Seven million. The constant of a cone of a Lambert, <coughs> yeah, constant of a cone, in other words, the sine value. Uh, the constant of a cone is quoted as 0.395. So if we could say 23, 18, it's actually 23.3, so 23.3. Sign 0.3955. That's correct. The distance measured between two points on the navigation map is 42 millimeters. So, with a scale of 1,600,000, 1, okay, and then it's going to be times. Uh, uh, 42 millimeters equals divided by 185200 36.3 mm -hmm. The distance between meridians five degrees along latitude 37 north is nine centimeters. Distance between meridians five degrees apart. So what's the scale? Okay, five times 60 and the latitude is 37. So if we say 37, cosine 37 is 0.798 times, five times 60 is 300, two, three, nine. so 240 nautical miles, put that into centimeters, we've got 44 million, and this on the chart is nine centimeters, so divide that by nine centimeters. We have about five million, four million nine hundred and thirty thousand. There we go. Correct. On a direct Mercator projection, a particular chart length is measured at thirty north. What Earth distance will the same chart length be if measured at sixty north? On a direct Mercator projection, a particular chart length is measured at 30 north. What Earth distance will the same chart length be if measured at 60 north? It will be smaller distance. On a chart, a straight line is drawn between two points as a length of 4.63 centimeters. What is the chart scale if the line represents 150 nautical miles? So 150 times 185200 divided by 4.63, 6 million. Okay. Distance along meridian between latitudes 45 and 46 is six centimeters. The scale of the chart is approximately, so this is taking a meridian. So there's no cosine required. So one degree is 60 nautical miles times one eight five two zero zero 
divided by six centimeters. One million eight hundred fifty-two. Each chart has the scale one million one to one million. From A to B on the chart measures three point eight centimeters. The distance from A to B is how many nautical miles? So we've got one million. times 3.8 divided by 1852, which equals 20.5. Approximately how many nautical miles corresponds to 12 centimeters on a map with a scale of 2 million? Okay, 2 million times 12. Divided by 185200, 130 nautical miles. And on the nav in a navigation chart, a distance of 49 nautical miles is equivalent to seven centimeters. So 49 times 185200 divided by seven. So one, two, nine, six, four hundred. So one million three hundred thousand. If the chart scale is five hundred thousand, what earth distance would be represented by seven centimeters on the chart? Okay, so five hundred times seven. So three hundred three million five hundred thousand divided by one eight five two zero zero. That's nineteen. 19 nautical miles is not there, so let's try kilometers. Times one eight, well, well, let's try meters first. One eight five six, 35,000 meters. Yes. Direct Mercator chart with a scale of 200,000 at the equator. Chart length A to B in the vicinity is 11 centimeters. What's the approximate distance from A to B? So 200,000 times 11 centimeters, so 2,200,000, divided by 1,85,200. That's 11.9 nautical miles, 12 nautical miles, good. The chart distance to the meridians 10 degrees apart at latitude 65 north is, okay, the chart scale is, So let's do um, cosine 65.42, 10 degrees times 60 is 600. So that's 254 nautical miles. And multiply that by 185200. Divide by 9.5 centimeters. It gives a scale of nearly 5 million. Yep. Which statement is correct about the scale of a Lambert projection? Which statement is correct about the scale of a Lambert projection? The scale reaches its maximum value at the. Which statement is correct about the scale of a Lambert projection? The scale reaches its minimum value at the parallel of origin. Positions A, so the same latitude, going eastbound from 17 to 23, are plotted on a Lambert chart with a constant of the cone of 0.5. That's the sign of the mean latitude. A and B are connected by a straight line. The true track measured at 88.5. At A is 88.5, yeah, in Northern Hemisphere. So at B, so we say 90 minus 88.5, it's 1.5. So we do 90 plus 1.5, 91.5. True check measure at B is 91.5. 
on a Mercator projection, the distance between 57 north, so same latitude, came from 35 east to 40 east, that's five degrees longitude, is five centimeters, so five times 60. Uh, do you want to do cosine? Yeah, let's do cosine 57. So 57, cosine 57 is that. A change along to use five times 60, which is 300, so times 300 equals 163 nautical miles times 185200 divided by five centimeters. So it's just over 6 million, 6 million 52,030, yep. A straight line from A, same latitude, going from 55 east to 170 west, so it's an eastbound, easterly direction, or eastbound direction. It's drawn on a Lambert conical chart with standard parallels 50 degrees south and 56 degrees south. When passing 175, the true track, okay, so the run line would be, which is the same as the halfway direction. The run line would be 090. In the southern hemisphere going west to east, we have a decrease. Okay, so it's going to be less than 90 degrees. The only one that's less than 90 is A, that's 78 degrees. Okay, that's going to answer. A straight line from A, same latitude. 155 west to 170 east, so we're going westbound. When passing the meridian 175 east, so we're more, more to the east of the side, more to the departure point. The true track is, so in the northern hemisphere, okay, westerly is going to be 270. The starting direction is going to be more than 270. It's going to be Going westerly, we're going to decrease. So, however, at the starting point, it's more than 270. Okay, let's see. Let me draw this out. Let's draw a circle. So straight line from 53 north. We're going from 155 west to 170 east. That's because we're crossing the anti-meridian. We're going to go in a westerly direction. Okay. Now we're doing this this way. At so from one fifty five west to one seventy east. So one fifty five west to one seventy east. Good. Uh, next, when passing meridian to one seven five east. So when passing this point, what is the direction? The run line would be 270. The great circle track is going to be less at this point here. It's going to be less than 270 because we've passed the midpoint. The midpoint would be the same as the run line 270. So less than 270. The question is how much less well. We're going to go for the one that's closer to 270 in this case because it's only 175. 
So let's go with 260. Yep. From Raknovic, Rakovnik, sorry, 50 degrees north. We're going from 13 east to, to 8 east, so we're going westbound. The true track of departure along the straight line is 272. Great circle track, in other words. That makes sense in the northern hemisphere. The starting point is going to be more, and it will be decreasing. So what's the constant of the cone? Okay, so 272. Well, we know 272 is the, the difference between 272 and 270 is a conversion angle. So conversion angle equals 272 minus 270, which equals two degrees. Convergency therefore is two times two, which equals four. And if we take the convergency formula, which is um, change of longitude times sine mean latitude. So four equals, what's the change in longitude? Let's do this. 13, 41.5. Minus eight thirty eight point three. She goes five. Let's just say five point zero five. Change change along to use five point zero five times the sine mean latitude, or well, the mean latitude is fifty zero five point nine which is 50 points, let's just say 50.1, 50.1, that's the mean latitude, sine 50.1, so that's 0 0.76, uh, 0 0.77, 0 0.77, But we know that's wrong because the the answer is actually 0 0.79. We did that before. So if, if we didn't know the latitude, what would we do? We would say inverse of sine, wouldn't we? Or we would say 0 0.5, sorry, 5.05. And actually, we would say 4 divided by 5.05. Yep. 4 divided by 5.05 equals 0 0.792. There we go. An aeronautical aeronautical chart is conformal when at any point the scale over a short distance in the direction of the parallel is equal to the scale in the direction of the meridian. The meridians are perpendicular to the parallels. On a Mercator chart at latitude 60 north, the distance measured between 2 west and 8 east, that's 10 degrees change of longitude, is 20 centimeters. Scale of the chart, and okay, so we'll say latitude 60. Five. Cosine of 60 is 0.5. So 0.5 times change of longitude of 10 degrees five degree, is 5 nautical miles times 185200. It's 926,000 centimeters divided by 20. That's 46,300, that can't be right. So on the Mercator chart, latitude 60, the distance measured between west two and east eight, that's 10 degrees, is 20 centimeters. 
Yeah, so what's the scale? So we've already said departure is 60. We got cosine 60. Cosine 60 is 0.5. 10 times uh, 60 is 600. So times 600 for the change in longitude, that's 300 nautical miles times 1852, that's 55 and a half million. Divide by 20 centimeters equals 2,778, 2,780. Mm -hmm. At latitude 60 north, the scale of a Mercator projection is one to five million. At latitude 60 north, the scale of a Mercator projection is 1 to 5 million. The length on the chart between C and D. So the same latitude, 60 north, we've got east 8 to west 8. That's 16. Change the longitude of 16 degrees. Okay, so let's do cos 60. 0.5, so 0.5 times 16 times 60. Times 16 times 60. 480 nautical miles times 185200 centimeters divided by Ah, okay. Yeah, so divide by five million. So we've got seventeen point eight centimeters. The direct Mercator gratitude is based on the projection that is cylindrical. A straight line is drawn on a Lambert's conformal conical chart between two positions of different longitudes. A straight line is drawn on a Lambert's conformal conical chart between two positions of different longitudes. Between two positions of different longitudes, yeah. The angular difference between the initial true track and the final true track of the line is equal to The angular difference between the initial true track and the final true track of the line is equal to conversion angle. No, conversion, no, it's conversion, not conversion angle. Um, chart convergency or earth convergency. Let's say earth convergency. Oh, chart convergence, yeah, okay. The angular student, the great circle track drawn on the chart is equal to chart convergence. On a Lambert's chart, convergence equals that. Um, okay, so chart convergence is the term. How does the scale vary in a direct Mercator chart? Direct Mercator chart, scale. I've got some notes there, let me see. Scale expands from the equator with the secant of the latitude, okay. Expands from the equator. Scale increases with increasing distance from the equator. Scale expands at an equal rate north and south of the equator proportional to the secant of the latitude. A secant is inversely proportional to a cosine. Therefore, we state, that scale expands at an equal rate north and south of the equator, inversely proportional to the cosine of the latitude. Scale at any latitude equals the scale at the equator times the cosine of the latitude. 
On a direct Mercator chart at latitude 15 degrees south, a certain length represents a distance of 120 nautical miles on the Earth. The same length on the chart will represent on the Earth at latitude 10 degrees north, a distance of... Hmm, on a direct Mercator chart at latitude 15 south. Latitude 15 south. A certain length represents a distance of 120 nautical miles. Okay. So that's 15, cosine 15. Yep. Times change along this u equals 120. So if we divide by 120. Let's do this again. So departure equals Chalong 60 times cos flat. So, on a direct mutator chart, let you 15 south or seven it represents a distance of 120 nautical miles. So, we can say 20 equals 15 south is the latitude. So, Geelong 60 because 15. So 120 equals Shalom 60 times cos 15 is 0.9659, we'll say 0 0.97. And therefore, 120 divided by 0 0.97 equals Chalong 60, which equals 124. And if we say 124, one, two, four divided by 60, Change of longitude equals two point zero seven equals change of longitude. Okay. Same length from the chart represent the Earth at latitude ten degrees north. So we're saying here, on a direct Mercator chart at latitude 15 south, a certain length represents a distance of 120 nautical miles. Okay. Okay. Well, the same length on the chart at latitude 10. Okay, would the distance, would it, would it be more or less? It would be, distance would be the same length. Would be more. So 120 nautical miles, the same length would be more uh, 
Let's take that one. That's no, okay, 122.3. This is really, really boring now. On a direct Mercator chart at latitude 45 degrees north, a certain chart length. Oh, gosh. This is, let's rather look at my phone. Let's see what else is going on. This is boring. What else is going on in the world right now? On a direct Mercator chart at latitude 45 degrees north, a certain chart length along 45 degrees north represents a distance of 90 degrees, oh, sorry, 90 nautical miles. Same length on the chart along latitude 30 degrees north will represent a distance on the earth of, so how do we do that before? Said, scale latitude, ABBA, ABBA, scale latitude A times cosine latitude B, equals scale latitude B times cosine latitude A. Earth distance can also be substituted for scale. So earth distance A, times cosine B equals latitude B times cosine A. Okay, so the last one we did. Uh, okay. Transpose the formula. Earth distance latitude A equals not so clear. On a direct Mercator chart at latitude 45 degrees north, a certain chart length along 45 degrees north represents a distance of 90 nautical miles. Okay, let's see. Abba. What are they doing the last one? A, B, A. So A equals B, A divided by B. Initially, it was A times B equals B times A. Now we've got A equals B A divided by B. Okay, so we take these values. What's A? I want to do with the last question first. So A was that one, cosine A, 10 degrees north. Equals 120 times cosine 10. D 
divided by 15. So that was 10 north equals 120 divided by it. So it times point. Point nine eight five. by 15. So that's 10 north equals 118.2 by 15. Seven point eight eight. No, that didn't work. Oh, because it's cosine fifteen, my bad. Cosine fifteen. Sign fifteen point nine six point nine seven one two two three seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's try that now over here. On a direct Mercator chart at latitude 45 north, a certain chart length along 45 north represents a distance of 90, 90 nautical miles on the surface of the Earth. So a latitude 30. So if we say 30 north. Okay. Plus 30, plus 45. Yeah, just confirm that. That was the old code sign. Okay, the new code sign. And instead of 120, we've got 90. So if we say 90 times, let's say what's cosine 30 anyway? Cosine 30 is 0 0.866. Let's Cos 45 is 0 0.707. Down here, we say 90 times 0.866. We get 77.95. divided by 0 0.707, 110, 24. Let's try that. Yeah, got it right. Alhamdulillah. So ABBA. Scale latitude A times cosine latitude B equals scale latitude B times cosine latitude A. Mm. 
the direct Mercator projection, the distance measured between two meridian space five degrees apart, the scale of this chart and that you 60 is approximately. Five degrees apart, latitude 60. Okay. So let's look. Latitude 60 is cosine 60 times five degrees. That's five times 60, which is 300. 0.5 times 300 is 150 nautical miles times 185200, 27,780,000 divided by 8 centimeters. So we've got 3 million, 3.5 million. Okay, so that's 3.5 On the Lambert conformal conic chart, the distance between parallels of latitude and space the same number of degrees apart. is B is correct, isn't it? Yep. What's the chart distance between longest use? 179 and 175. So 179 east, that's one degree from the anti-meridian, and five degrees west from the anti-meridian, that's six degrees. So the chart distance of six degrees on the direct Mercator chart with a scale of so six times 60. Okay, six times 60 is 360. They haven't given us the um, latitude. Oh, at the equator, okay, so 360. And we have a scale of 5 million. So 360 times 185200. Let me do it on the calculator. So we've got six degrees change in longitude. Six times sixty is three sixty. Okay, and we want to know so that in centimeters is one eight five two zero zero. Okay, and the scale is five million. So if we divide that by five, one two three one two three, we get thirteen centimeters. And in millimeters, so there's no answer there with centimeters. We only have millimeters, so we've multiplied by 10. 133.34 millimeters. The only answer there is D. When on a direct Mercator projection, where on a direct Mercator projection is the chart convergency con correct compared to the Earth convergency? Okay, where on a direct Mercator projection is the chart convergency correct? compared to the Earth Convergency. Chart Convergency, Earth Convergency. So the direct Mercator, that's a cylindrical chart. Where is the projection correct? Okay, it's only gonna be at the equator. Yeah. Assume a Mercator chart, the distance between positions A and B located on the same parallel and 10 degrees longitude apart is six centimeters. The scale at the parallel is that. What's the latitude of A and B? Okay, so we have to do a reverse calculation. So we've got nine million. thousand times six centimeters. 55,560,000 centimeters 
divide by 185200. Zero, zero. That gives us 300 nautical miles. Question is asking us. Distance between positions A and B on the same parallel and 10 degrees longitude is six centimeters, okay, which is the equivalent of 300 nautical miles. We divide that by 60. Yeah, five, five. So if the longitude is 10 degrees, 10 degrees longitude becomes five if you multiply it by a cosine of, Point five, so sorry, point five, so point five, so ten, five divided by ten, point five, okay, and point five, so now we want the cosine, cosine of which latitude? So if, cosine of which latitude gives five point five. We could do it one by one and test. So 60.5, yeah. Mm. Let's just mm. double check 30 is not. Okay, and 45 is not. Good. So the answer is 60. On a direct Mercator projection at latitude 45 degrees north. A certain length represents 70, 70 nautical miles. On a direct Mercator projection at latitude 45 north, a certain length represents 70 nautical miles. At latitude 30 north, the same length represents approximately Mercator expands the further you go from the, from the equator. So closer to the equator, the same length represents approximately more. So it's not going to be 70, it's going to be it's going to be 81 or 86. If we use the ABBA formula for this. Let's try. Did we say ABBA? So we, got, we want to know at latitude 30 north. We had cosine Thirty north equals seventy nautical miles. Seventy times cosine thirty. So if we say cosine thirty is point eight six six. Have we done this before? Is this the same question? Here we go. 30. So 0 0.866 times 70 equals 60.62. Cosine 45 is 0 0.707, that's correct. So if we say 60.62 divided by 0 0.707, we get 85.745. Yep, alhamdulillah, that was correct. Good. What was that? 
for now. Thank you for watching. I'll uh, disconnect. You're welcome to join me on my next uh, study session. <laughs>